Welcome back to Coloring Through the Bible. My name is Keegan Harkins, and today we're talking about Genesis chapter 17. In this chapter, God gives Abraham the covenant of circumcision. So what does that mean to us today? Well, the sign of the covenant or the contract between God and Abraham was that the men were supposed to be circumcised. We don't live under the covenant that God made with Abraham. Jesus' death and resurrection ended that contract and began the new covenant of Jesus Christ. And so we're called to live with circumcised hearts instead of circumcised bodies. And there's been a lot of debate about circumcision, and I'm not saying you should or should not circumcise your child. I'm merely wanting to look at the condition of our hearts today. Romans 2.29 tells us that we are to have circumcised hearts. So what does that look like? Well, to be circumcised means that we are forever changed from what we used to be. It's an undeniably distinctive expression of our commitment to God. In the time between the Old Testament and the New Testament, Israel was at one point controlled by the Greeks. And this conflict of circumcision kind of really came to a head at this time. On one hand, you had the Greeks who were very much worshipped the physical form. They, they strove to achieve physical beauty and perfection. And one of the ways that they did that was by spending a lot of time at the gym. It was a important part of everyday life and society in Greek society. And when they were at the gym and they were working out or they were wrestling, it was done in the nude. So this would make this issue of circumcision right out there. I mean, it wasn't something that you could keep to yourself. Everybody would be able to tell whether you were a follower of the one true God or you were not. So in essence, this was a covenant and a contract between God and his people that called them to live distinct and obviously different. Now, in this instance, it caused some conflicts because people who really weren't committed to God actually underwent this surgery to reverse the circumcision. And this led to the religious leaders of the time being incredibly irate. And actually, this is where the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees came into being. It was a way of policing the morality of God's people. But we know that no one else can police our morality. That's us. We're the only ones that know what the condition of our heart is. And under the covenant of Jesus Christ... God has written his contract with us on our hearts. So that's the important part. It isn't our physical bodies, whether we are physically different from someone who believes in an idol. We are called to be emotionally, spiritually, and at the center of our inner being distinct. To have a circumcised heart to be forever changed from who we were, to be noticeably different from the rest of the world. So I want to encourage us all today as we're going about our day to keep that in mind that we have been forever changed by the cross of Calvary. And that changes us from the inside out. So let's not hide it. Let's be proud of who we are. Let's be proud of the commitment and proud of the covenant that we have with our God. I don't want God to be ashamed of me. And I am definitely not ashamed of God. So let's live so that everyone can see that our hearts have been circumcised for God. I hope that you have a really wonderful day. And I will see you back here tomorrow.